now a Martinsville-ite. Is that what you call it? <laughs> Our T-shirt. Uh, we moved here October 2022, and we're in Fox Cliff South. I guess my husband laughs and says that's the poor version. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, I think my house is nice. You know, I'm, I'm fine with it. But, um, and so my, with my husband and I grew up in a small town similar to Martinsville, and so we fall in love with it and are been exploring and learning. And so although I will tell you that our college-age children are not happy that we moved because uh, they gave up uh, their bedrooms and all this kind of goofy stuff, but I keep reminding them that in three more years they're gone and uh, we will be here and be happy. So, <laughs> so I, um, I'm the executive director. I've been here in this role for six years. Um, although I'm not big on titles, um, you know, I think about that, and I, you know, and I just think, well, who am I? What am I? What am I doing? And, and it's like I'm super, super obsessed with supporting our law enforcement officers. And that happened because I had an epiphany. Um, I had a car accident. A young man hit me, towed my car. At that time, I'm bleeding. I had a blueberry shake for breakfast. It was all down me. It was all over my car. And there I am, just a blubbering idiot, and I had this young officer coming up, tapping me on the shoulder, talking me through it, calming me down, and then here comes the first, or the EMT, getting me out, getting me checked out, and I, I, I'd never been in trouble other than a speeding ticket, um, and I thought, oh my gosh, these guys do this every day, and they see people at the worst, and it just really hit me. Um, and I thought about it a lot. In fact, I found out that officer's name and I wrote a, a note to the chief of, it was in Greenwood, chief of police at the time um, in Greenwood, and I said, hey, can you help me connect with this man? And I, I wrote him a letter and told him what he meant to me that day. And so this position came open, and I was so excited to uh, interview and got the role and have been here ever since. And so we've taken the organization from about a $200,000 to over, raising over a million dollars every year for the last four years. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about the mission, um, the beginning, the territory we cover, how we support officers, and a little bit of a few, just a few stats. So um, the gentleman, what's your name? I'm so sorry. Brian. Brian introduced uh, me and he read um, our mission statement. And so our main focus is on officers that are injured or killed on duty and their families. But as well, we like to focus on providing supplemental resources for officers and on duty, and then anything we can do to help build positive relationships with, between police and our community. So here's the start. Um, in July 2008, Officer J IP Officer Jason Fishburne was shot. Um, they were going after uh, a perpetrator and he kind of ambushed him, waited behind a house, and shot him in the head and the torso. At the time, the perpetrator was still running loose, and so the officer could not bring EMTs in to help take care of Jason. But thank God, one of our officers had been a medic in the military, and he had created his own little medical kit back, um, stop the bleed type kit. And so he treated Jason and then got in the back of the squad car, took him to the hospital, and literally saved his life. It was touch and go, but he was bleeding profusely. Um, but they were able to slow the bleed down until he gave into surgery. The, at that time, um, you guys may know, you probably see on the news, um, Sergeant Rick Snyder, who's the president of the FOP, he was his sergeant and um, took it very hard, personally, as any of us would and decided that he needed to start this venture of providing some sort of minimal training and some sort of equipment for the officers to use to stop the bleeding when an officer shot. And um, they partnered with the Father's House, which is a church up in, um, oh my gosh, I forget what road, kind of near Brookville Road, I think. Um, they did a lot of research talking to doctors and emergency room folks and even did some research about the, the how people are, when off, people are stressed, it affects your mind, it affects your dexterity, and they even looked at some of those deeper um, levels to be able to try to find the right equipment 
and have it in a situation that's easier to use for those folks in a stressful situation needing to treat an officer. Um, and then although developed for officers, but we're using them, we're using these kits that we developed more on citizens. And I'll talk to you more about that. Um, but we got um, the Indianapolis Colts and the Pacers Foundation came together to give us the funds to start um, providing these kits for the Indianapolis Police Department. Um, I will tell you, uh, Indianapolis Colts are absolutely amazing at the support they get our community and the support they get our police officers. They literally have probably been the key donor that's kept us alive and can continue to keep us growing. They support police. In 2017, um, we decided that we needed to grow. And so we went from the Indianapolis Police Foundation to the Central Indiana Police Foundation. And so our territory now includes Morgan County. And so you can see on the map, it's Marion County and all the touching counties is who we serve. Although I will tell you, my office sits um, in the basement of the Turner Order Police 86 in Fountain Square. And so I probably have more interactions on a daily basis with um, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. And we probably do 30, 35% of what we do is for them because we're there. Um, however, um, we try and make ourselves available to serve all departments within our territory. So um, up here I have kind of the main areas. Number one, two, and three are our three main pillars, and I'll break those down and tell you what those mean. Code one, invest in blue behind the line. And then we have a couple ancillary um, sections of CIPF, which is one supports the IEP Canine Association, and then one supports the Mountain Patrol, and I'll explain that. So code one is a term that means trouble, right? There's a problem um, within policing. And our biggest number one focus is when there is an officer killed in the line of duty, we want to step in and support them and support their families. That happens um, in a variety of different ways. But very specifically, um, you'll see, um, I think Officer um, Brian Leith was the, one of the most um, horrible for me. That was my first officer I lost. She's a mother, um, she's a military vet and young and beautiful and an amazing officer. And so we walk beside her family, we walk beside the, her child's name, the father of her child, we collected funds, um, we created a trust fund for her son, we appointed people to, to manage that money to make sure that there's funds left over, um, that no one's spending all that um, for things that aren't necessary, but it's being managed appropriately. And we did a lot of other different little things um, for the family. So that's our number one priority is, is taking care of the families. Then there's officers that are injured in the line of duty, either on, in the line of duty or in, uh, they're officers, they're sworn officers, but they're not in the line of duty, but they're injured. And so um, we've got up here, the first square is our Trafalgar officer, Moody, who was paralyzed a couple summers ago. So we did help raise money, help provide a wheelchair accessible van for him. He was really having a difficult time as any of us would, um, being able to, not being able to leave the home, not being able to drive, having no control. And so this van kind of was a new lease that really helped him to be able to take care of his kids and drive his kids to school and just different things like that. The middle officer is Fisher's officer, Ben Dennis, who was in Brown County, had a motorcycle accident and was paralyzed um, as well. And so, again, we walked out at fundraisers um, for him, helped collect funds, apply for grants, and paid for some of his treatment that his insurance wouldn't cover. And then finally, we have IAPD officer um, Rosenbaum, who was after a guy who was stealing stuff at Lowe's, and then the guy basically told him, today you're gonna die, and Officer Rosenbaum brought out his knife, or he had it serrated on one edge, so when he went to get the guy, he used the wrong edge. Mm -hmm. um, then the guy, uh, the perpetrator, stole Rosenbaum's gun, tried to shoot him, um, and did in his leg, 
knocked out his teeth and knocked out and, and tore up his arm. So it was a really crazy situation. He had two young children at the time. When he came in my office, I, I knew he had some bill issue, money issues, and I gave him a check, and I've never seen a man look so despondent. He's doing well now, he's back in the police force working as a detective, but we've walked beside him a lot. He had a new baby too, and needed, you know, his wife had quit working to stay home raise the kids, and then all this happened. So there was just a lot of little things that we did to help support them. So our main focus, one of our main focuses right now is um, wellness. Um, I'm sure you've heard in the news, with the media, what's happening. Um, a lot of craziness, our officers are struggling. Uh, since 2020, the George Floyd incident, um, there's been, especially in your bigger cities, there's just been a lot happening with our police. And so we decided a couple years ago that we were gonna do more for wellness. So this fall, we have our first inaugural wellness seminar. And Keeley, with the Kendrick Foundation, gave the scholarship to us so that we could help provide um, the fee for Morgan County officers to attend. Um, so we're super excited about that. That's September 25th to 26th. And we will invite all of our area police departments to come in and bring their um, couple of their officers in to learn, find about, out about options, counseling, certain types of um, treatment. Um, and we're looking at all different areas of a healthy officer, right? So we're looking at spiritual, financial, physical, and mental. And so we'll touch on all those areas. So we're super excited about that. So we talked about the Stop the Bleed Kids earlier. That's how we got our start. And so that, that trauma kit, which I think all Morgan County officers have, you guys have them in the back of your car, the passenger seat of the car. Um, that is what we call part of our Invest in Blue pillar. So anytime we can provide funds to help provide equipment that's not covered in the budget, or they can help the officer be a better officer, um, or training that can help the officer um, bring that, that skills to, to teach their team. We want to do that, and so we raise money and provide grants to do those things and provide equipment. Actually, this is kind of a cool story. Um, if you see the, the photo of the young lady, the officer in the middle to the right is, um, he was, he's not an officer now, he's retired, Matt Morgan. He was one of the first officers when I, Indianapolis got the drama kits to save a life. This young lady was about 10 years old. She had climbed up on a train. She had fallen underneath the train and her leg was severed completely. And so he actually used the trauma kit, the tourniquets, and stopped the bleed gods, et cetera, and was able to save her life. And continues to keep in touch with her. She's doing famously well. She's rock climbing. She's doing things. She, she no longer has her legs. They were not able to save her leg, but she participates in a lot of activities. Um, Paralympics is the name of it. So she's doing really well, but it's a pretty cool situation that her life was saved with one of the kids we've done. 2019, we finished providing those trauma kits to everybody, or at least offered them to every police department territory. 2022, we were then able to provide trauma kits to every state police um, trooper and throughout the whole state. We've given over 5,300 kits, and now we're expanding the trauma kit program to the entire state of Indiana. We're working slowly, raising money and giving those kits to each department. They literally <coughs> saved hundreds of lives. And initially, like I said earlier, they were designed to help save the police officers' life, but we've used them on more citizens um, than, than officers. So then the uh, next pillar is behind the line. And so this is where we provide $300 grants for National Night Outs. We um, help with a, a thing called Great Camp, which is where some of the inner city kids are trained about resisting gangs and how to deal with communicating when there's a conflict and some deeper levels um, of, of things like that that can help the kids grow up, set goals, and um, be good citizens. And Shop with a Cop, bike radio, different things like that. Um, 
we wanted to help with. Then those ancillary groups, um, the IEP had um, a canine association and their bookkeeper and the nonprofit didn't work out right, so we came in and kind of are acting as a fiscal agent for them. And the same thing with the IEP Mountain Patrol. The difference with the IEP Mountain Patrol is we did not step in and help them build a new home for their IEP officers. They probably would no longer have the Mountain Patrol. Has anybody here tried to build a building? I'm just curious. <laughs> I'll let you know that I will never build another building as long as I live, because I have been contractor, financial person for building this building. And uh, when this is done, my building, my contract hat is going into the trash. But um, we have it about 70% done. We still have about $400,000 more, which will take us to 2.1 million to finish this farm for Mountain Patrol. But we're happy that we've saved the Mountain Patrol. They've never had their own home. Um, and so um, we're actually, if you're interested, September the 12th, we're going to do a tour called Dusty Boots Tour. It's an open house of the new barn. And so we would love to have you come down, take a look, eat with us, and uh, see what we're doing, meet some of our horses. So policing. Uh, I know I've got some police officers here, sheriffs, so you guys know this, and maybe the rest of you, I mean, ever since uh, COVID, George Floyd, all that stuff, policing um, has had a lot of negative trends. Um, not because they deserve it, um, because 99.9% .9 of our officers are amazing. Everybody that I know I work with are amazing. They're, they're helpers. They're always there to help. I even noticed uh, Sergeant Kessie, someone started lifting chairs and moving chairs and he immediately went out to help them. If I'm anywhere inside of a door and an officer's near me, my door is open. If I'm carrying something, they're helping me carry. Our officers are helpers. They're amazing. We need to support them. But because of everything that's happening, because certain small minority and the way they perceive situations. Um, the, the trend for policing um, is not going in a great direction, especially in our larger cities. We're having a hard time finding officers. Um, I know your regional, like Morgan County, you probably aren't struggling as much as some of the bigger departments, but, um, and, and some of the bigger city officers are going, like, they're tired of the crap, and they're moving to the rural areas. So some of the rural areas are benefiting. Um, but we're, we're seeing few, fewer people choosing policing. ILEA and the, and the other programs that train officers, their classes are way, way down. Um, and we've got a lot of officers that are close to retirement, and we're seeing more officers leaving. Um, they're not staying beyond the time they have to. You know, or when they when they can retire, they're like not staying beyond that. They're leaving the profession. Um, I know with IMPD, we are down 300 over 300 police officers, and out of the officers we have, a hundred of them are on payroll or not working for either um, an injury, mental health, or something happening. So these are just a few statistics. If you have interest. This website that's up there, odmp.org, is a great website. Um, we're looking at the first um, graph there is line of duty deaths from 2020 to 2024. You can see that 2020's up there close to 5, 450, it looks like. And then 2021, we jumped way up over 700. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of that was came after. COVID, some of it's COVID, some of those deaths, and then, um, and also um, for, there were more officers being shot, um, and that has unfortunately increased. If you look to the right, we have 20, 24 causes of Lyme duty deaths. As of um, two, three days ago, we had 88 officers that have been lost, and you can see what, what they were lost from. So 35 um, gunfire, which is a decrease in this time last year. Um, 30 from auto accidents of some form, which has increased over this time last year. Then you have medical, some sort of medical emergency, whether it's COVID, heart, whatever, is 13, that's a decrease, and then other category um, is an increase. Then here, this map, this is, I mean, you really can't see this, I apologize. Um, can you guys see it? I need glasses. 
but it just kind of shows you um, the officers that have died in 2024 in what state. Um, and so it seems like Texas has the whole, we've got lost 10 officers in 2024 there, but in, in Indiana, we lost Deputy Fred Fissler, um, it's Hendricks County. So you may be aware of that. We've been working with his family as well. So, you know, prior to me in this role, I used to always think, like, I supported police, but how do you help? Like, other than, um, we have police officers in our church every Sunday, and so I make sure I, I go over to them. My kids are annoyed by this, but because mom's always talking and can't get to their seat and blah, blah. But um, I make sure I be lying to the officers that are there, and I thank them for their service, and I thank them for being there to protect us. Um, I always wonder how, how we support officers. And so with this foundation, this is a way that we can support our officers. Um, I know with Morgan County, we've, put, we've fed them during COVID. I know that. Um, brought the food truck to the Sheriff's Department. Um, we provide the trauma kits. We definitely are like working with Keeley and, and getting a scholarship for the Wellness Summit. Um, and we can, you know, we definitely should sit down Sheriff Meyer and see what else we can do for you. Uh, but we, we, we love serving you. But, but for those of you who are not law enforcement, this through us, we can we can serve the police and help help them. Um, especially with this wellness, that's our main priority is to create opportunities and make sure our officers stay healthy and do everything that we can and support the department to do that. So we have opportunities for volunteering. We have opportunities for sponsorship for different events. Um, or if you're a representative organization and you want to do something to give back, reach out. Um, I had a health company a while back say, hey, I want to do something. So we worked together and did the landscaping for a department that had really needed some landscaping. It sounds silly, but when the officer comes in every day and it's beautiful, and then you know by the door that they enter, there's a tree and a memorial to a fallen officer. And those are things that mean something to them. They're little. Um, but we, we love to do that type of thing. So we can definitely work with you um, as a business owner um, or as a citizen if there's anything that you want to do to help. Um, but does anybody have any questions? I'm going to weigh over time. Good. Good? Okay. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer or Sergeant Kessie can answer? <laughs> So our largest fundraiser is something called Thanksgiving Breakfast with the Cops. It's every November. Um, and we invite companies to sponsor those tables, and they bring their employees or their vendors. And then we have a speaker, um, and then we make an ask, and we have silent auction and live auctions. That's our main fundraiser. We just started doing purse bingos, which has been really fun and effective. Um, I really like purse bingos. Um, I, I don't really know, but I can't play. So, every now and then, when I'm buying a purse for a purse bingo, and there's one on sale, I'll buy myself one. <laughs> so, on my car, for sure. Um, so, we, this year we're also going and doing a golf outing for the first time. Um, and so, we do a lot of things where we sell certain things. And all, social media, we constantly are operating in the social media and utilizing that to sell or membership programs and different things like that. So, a lot of different things. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. Please stop by. Sergeant Kessie came down with me to show you some historical um, things. CIPF has a room full that we're responsible for, which is kind of crazy, um, of uh, old police documents and equipment and photos. And so, Definitely stop by and see some of those. And um, if you have any questions later, definitely reach out to us, let us know. And thank you so much.